see, a lot of people don't, didn't think Taekwondo is philosophy. I wasn't either. Welcome to Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio, episode 180, and thanks for tuning in. Today, we hear from Grandmaster Jun Ri. Yes, that Jun Ri. Here at Whistle Kick, we make the world's best sparring gear, and on Martial Arts Radio, we bring you the best podcast on the traditional martial arts twice every week. Welcome. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm your host as well as the founder of Whistle Kick Sparring Gear and Apparel. Thank you to the returning listeners, and welcome to those of you tuning in for the very first time. You can find the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, which is also the best place to sign up for the newsletter. As a thank you for joining, we're going to send you our top 10 tips for martial artists, which is an exclusive podcast episode. We have never, will never air that in our regular podcast feed. Now, our newsletter is going to keep you up to date on what's going on behind the scenes. We'll tell you about upcoming show guests and even throw you some discounts on products once in a while. Back on episode 14, we were lucky enough to speak with Bill Superfoot Wallace. Some of you asked for a transcript of the show, and with permission, we've gone ahead and done that. You can find versions for both Kindle and in paperback over at Amazon. It's hard to be in the martial arts and not know who Grandmaster Jun Ri is, though there are certainly some who don't. When you talk about Taekwondo's start in the USA, you're really talking about Grandmaster Ri. A friend of Bruce Lee, he's a central figure in a book we've spoken of many times on this show, A Killing Art. There's something particularly special about speaking to someone who has been training as long as Grandmaster Ri. While not in the best of health, he was willing to take some time out of his day to speak with me about martial arts, philosophy, and his beliefs on the intersection of the two. Let's welcome him. Grandmaster Ree, welcome to Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, sir. It's an honor and absolute privilege to speak with you. It's a mutual. Yeah, thank you. We like to talk to our guests about how they got started in the martial arts before we go off on any wanderings and start telling stories because it, it tends to give us context for their path. And I know that your start in the martial arts has been well documented and I'm sure many, many of our listeners know it, but for those that maybe haven't heard that part of your, your life, could yeah. you tell us a little bit about how you got started with your training? Well, uh, when I was uh, 14, uh, I had a little, a little street fight and I won, but I was scared. So I I want to be prepared myself to not to be scared. So I I, I entered the Chengdu one uh, right behind my uh, my home. And so and another another thing that uh, is that yeah, as soon as that uh, one week is over, I knew what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go U.S. promote Taekwondo in the U.S. When I was 14, I had, I had that decision. What? Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, I was 14 once. I've known a number of 14-year-olds, and I don't think any of them had that clear of a life plan. Why did you feel so strongly about that? Well, uh, I, I, I was always uh, longing for U.S., and I always wanted to, the, the Korean culture to be introduced to the world. And uh, so I thought Taekwondo would be the most ideal item mm. okay. for Korean. Sure. And how long did it take you to realize that dream? How What what age were you ten, when you... Ten years. Only ten years? Yes. Okay. And you spent that time training, preparing, That's learning right. Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. I came uh, 1950, 12 years, 1956 the U.S. And what did you, how, how did you start teaching Taekwondo when you arrived in the U.S.? Well, uh, when I, first I learned, I, I just taught exactly the way I learned. Then I had a lot of new ideas. You know, uh, some of the ideas they are teaching was very too primitive. And so we have to be really improved, and uh, that's how I really started. Okay, great. Stories. I love stories. I told you before we started the recording that stories are kind of my favorite part of what we do here. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that if I asked you to 
name them all. I mean, it would be books and books and, and some of the stories that you've told are in books that I've read. But if I asked you to pick one of your favorite stories for our listeners, what might that be? Well, uh, my new enlightened view of the world. Uh, this is my honest opinion. I was I was a devout Christian, and uh, I, when I woke up with the new ideas, Jesus Christ did not come just to create a little dinky church. He came here to build the kingdom of heaven on earth. So, a uh, philosophical term uh, would be utopia. So, I named the book called Trutopia. Have you heard of this book? I have. I haven't had the chance to read it, but now that you're on the show, I'm going to. Do you have one? I do not. Okay, well, when you uh, finish, you can e email me your address. Email oh, address, sure. e uh, your address, uh, mailing address, then I will send you one. Oh, well, thank you, sir. So tell, tell us about this book, then. Well, what this book is, uh, is about... Uh, we made, uh, you know, all the religions make dogma out of, you know, nonsense. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it's out of human reason. You, you, you know that, right? Yes, yes, I, I, I can relate. So, uh, you know, they, they, when they believe that, and they, they create a lot of uh, fabricated stories, like Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was, you know, born without father. I mean, that's that's very unnatural. That will never happen. And uh, you know, the dead the Jesus body was, you know, went to heaven. I mean, this this is this is really fooling the you know ignorant people. But intelligent, educated people will not believe in that. But they are afraid to say, oh, I don't believe that. Mm. And so uh, they, they said the perfect human being must appear, you know, like Jesus Christ. Uh, before we can start uh, building kingdom of heaven and earth. And uh, I, I decided maybe volunteer myself that I claim that I am a perfect human being. Uh, in other words, uh, divine human being means opposite of animal human being. Op op opposite is animal human being always lie. Divine human being never lie. Mm. Yeah. So I've, I've been trying to practice for the last 30, 40 years. To be honest, You you talked about dogma within religion, and dogma yes. within martial arts is a subject that comes up fairly frequently, in, in not just on this show, but in conversations that martial artists have, you know, in, in the dojang. And, and mm -hmm. Do you see parallels there? And what do you think no, of that? No, no, uh, what, uh, Jesus Christ hate the religion. He thinks the religion is making the world so crazy. You agree with me on that? Yeah. yeah. And so uh, he is not a religious person. He's a philosopher. Mm -hmm. Human beings like you and I. Right. And after he died, the Bible came out, church came about 300 years later, and uh, they can fabricate any way they want. Yes. Because there's no, there's no Jesus talk back to them. And I've heard some people, and, and 
you know, I'm curious of, of how you feel about this with Taekwondo because you were around in the early days. Do yeah, you... Taekwondo. See, a lot of people don't, didn't think Taekwondo is philosophy. I wasn't either. <laughs> how can pin, punching and kicking people's philosophy? Well, uh, first of all, you know, our first responsibility to God is protecting our the safety of our life. So we sh- we are responsible to learn how to defend, you know, under the under the you know, evil circumstances, mm. and uh, and we have to <clears throat> well, uh, never fail. You know, in other words, the world became crazy, right? You agree? Yes. Why? Why is it so crazy? Because people lie. You know, let's say uh, Trump Trump would lie to Soviet Union. Soviet Union lied to U.S. So these lies keep growing, and, and later on, it's very hard to trust. So they try to build the, the most dangerous kind of weapon they can find as atomic in, in hydrogen bomb. Mm. What, a, what a dangerous place to live here. Right. right. Especially when we have like people, Kim Jong-il. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You've talked about truth honesty yes a few times and and you said that it's something that you've spent quite a few years working to um to hone to to make sure that you are honest okay yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me let me have to repeat ask, Please. ask you to repeat after me sure well, when i am truthful when i am truthful my heart is beautiful my heart is beautiful when my heart is beautiful when my heart is beautiful, everybody loves me. Everybody loves me. When everybody loves me, when everybody loves me, I am happy. I am happy. Isn't that simple? It is simple, and and that is good logic. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's just very plain logic. And so uh, we never knew why we are living. The purpose of life was not clearly taught to the people. What do you think it is? I've always thought it was to be happy. That's right. Okay. Our purpose of life is to be happy. Yeah, you have to be happy. You know, to be happy, you have to be loved. Mm. See, Jesus Christ, you know, all the religious leaders say, you, you, better, you better live and die in my honor. That's the way introduce, you know, uh, to scare people. But God never asked us to honor for him. He always say, forget about me. Just love one another. Mm. You know, even physical parents never ask parents, you better be honoring for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How can a God ask, he's not the ego pen yet. Am I making sense? You are, you are, and I'm and I'm curious what because the, these are these are good principles. These are good lessons. Mm-hmm. What do these look like? Because I'm I'm assuming at some point you took this into your teaching, into yeah. the way you taught Taekwondo. Mm-hmm. So how did your Taekwondo teaching change as you brought it's these principles change. in? Well, uh, I introduced a uh, seven. Physical qualities of a champion. Okay. Yeah. You know those, you know the champion in Taekwondo? You have to have a power, speed, uh, <clears throat> timing, uh, endurance, balance, flexibility, and a good posture. There are seven corresponding, seven qualities of a human champion. Identical. That's why it's a, he said, now I said it's a philosophy. 
very in-depth philosophy I found. Can you see? Yeah, you you. So so you know you know you know you know, uh, you, know you know power plays knowledge, speed plays. You have to do the things quickly. You have to read a lot of books to read uh, very think very fast, and uh, punctuality timing, and uh, a persistent, a perseverance, flexibility. You, know, you have to be flexible with your heart, just like your body is. Mm. And uh, you have to have a good balance, your body, mind, and and heart. Body, mind, and, and uh, how they must be balanced. You know, those uh, strength in the body, honest in the heart, knowledge in the mind. So when you have all, everything balanced, so when you have all that, you are literally divine human being. Mm. Can you see? I do. Uh-huh. I do. You never lie. You love people. Then we are divine. We must. We must. Uh, you know. I think we are able to do anything we want. I think when I first came to U.S. Inventing new musical form and uh, safety gear. I, it, it's a, I could not believe I did it. As you grow and when you build your confidence, anything can do it. Hmm. If you were to take all of this knowledge that you have now and these, these understandings and go back to when you were 24 or 26 and you would, you know, come to the U.S. and you'd started teaching, what what would be different? Would there be less oh. uh, focus oh. on physical things? Oh. You know, it would, would be, of course, oh, they would be the same, but uh, totally different. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe I may, I may have several thousand divine human beings now. <laughs> <laughs> And once this formula works, it will be done within the 21st century because when we start, Washington doesn't mean we have to finish Washington then send us next to go to Moscow. It spread simultaneous time all over the world. Mm-hmm. So within a few decades, every country will have divine human beings. Do you think a martial arts practice is part of that journey? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because of what you spoke of before with the, the need to defend the, the protection element? Or is it more than that? Well, the you mean protect my body. Okay. All right. More than just the literal literal interpretation of protection then um that's right okay hmm. we're not supposed to have war we just right now we are so, we are having you know individual fight and that becomes expanded to become national fight in world fight What do we, as martial art, as the, as all martial artists today, if we think of martial arts as, you know, taekwondo and karate and and judo and all martial arts, what do we as martial artists do wrong? What what would what one thing would you want us to change? We're not we're not doing anything wrong. We're doing what anybody else is doing. We are trying to be good from normal evil. So. Never lie. Always love people. God will say, I love you. If I hate him, I hate him. God, I, I hate you. I still love you. Hmm. We have to be in that position. Not easy. No, <laughs> certainly not. 
That's why Jesus said, love thy enemy. You know, when he was uh, uh, baptized in the uh, Jordan River by the John the Baptist, the first thing he said is, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at the hand. He thought now he was baptized, he's ready. But he didn't know. See, he's not all knowing. Let me tell you, let me prove that to you. Okay. When Romans were trying to arrest him, he was he was trying to hide. So Judah kind of you know, sold the information of a thirty uh, silver, and that's how he was caught, right? Yeah. If he's all knowing, why didn't he make a helicopter run away? <laughs> it's true. Simple question. Simple question. So, so when when they lashed out, lied. Their lie has to become bigger and bigger and justify that. Yeah. Okay. If, if we could live in some kind of alternate world where Jesus was doing martial arts, how do you think he would have approached his training? I think he would have to exactly the way I did. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. How so? T- tell, tell us more. Well, teach the seven corners of a champion. Mm-hmm. So you become, you know, a perfect human being. Then you, you can manage your family, your village, your city, your, your country. There, there should be no disease, pain, and all diseases that we create from our own stress. I would agree. I've heard people break down the word disease into dis-ease, to say you are uneasy. Mm-hmm. And that creates it. Mm. Other than Jesus. Was there anyone that you would have wanted to train with that you didn't get to? Well, uh, you know, I, I trained with the 350 U.S. members of Congress, right? You heard of that? I did know that, yes. Yeah. Uh, naturally, I like to teach, I like to work out with uh, those who have influence around him. That's why... I picked Jesus I mean the US Congress. Mm. Okay. And they they promote better than you and I can together. Okay. Who was your favorite teacher? Mr. Om Un Gyu in Korea. Okay. And why him? Why was he your favorite? Because he has very uh, talented in Taekwondo and uh, very easy to explain, to understand. Some people are gifted. As teachers, you mean? Yeah. What do you think makes a good teacher? I, I think it is easy. Enthusiasm for first. He really, really have a will to teach. Then anybody can be a good teacher. It's not every day I get to speak with someone who has done as much to promote martial arts as Grandmaster Ree. It's been a few days since we recorded, and I'm finding myself reflecting on the time often. It was a personal victory to have him on the show, and for him to be so open with me was certainly an honor. Thank you, Grandmaster Ree, for coming on the show. You can find us on the social media. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. And our username is Whistlekick. You should also check out our Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, behind the scenes. Hit up our Amazon bookstore for an unabridged version of our Superfoot Bill Wallace interview. 
We have some other books over there, too, and even more in the works. Thanks for listening to this episode, and hopefully you'll check out others. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.